Hey, this is Digital Bike Computing. We are gonna go through the steps on how to download and install CentOS, which is a flavor of Linux, onto a VMware environment. So this is a server-based software, CentOS, Cent OS operating system, essentially. Uh, we're gonna be downloading the ISO, we're booting it, and we're mounting it, and we're getting it up and running on a VMware environment. Today, we are talking about CentOS. This is why you're watching this video, hopefully. Uh, we're gonna get it running in VMware. Now, I'm doing it in my VMware lab environment right here, which is running ESXi and vCenter. We're essentially gonna to go to the internet, download a free copy of CentOS, download it, load it, and install the operating system into our VMware environment. So let's just jump onto my computer right now and we'll go through those steps. So here we are in Google Chrome. We've just opened up our browser on our computer. I'm doing this on a Mac, but you can do this on a PC or wherever you may be using this uh, from. Uh, just open up your web browser and we're gonna look for in Google, we're gonna look for CentOS download, All right? Nice and easy. And we're gonna select the very top option, making sure that it's www.centos.org. And you're then gonna be presented with the download CentOS website. But you've got a couple of different options here. You can download the CentOS Linux DVD ISO or the Stream DVD ISO. We're gonna go and select Linux DVD ISO. It'll then ask you where you wanna download it from. So it should automatically detect where you are located and it will find mirrors, uh, essentially websites that are closer to where you live. So go and select really any of these. Uh, because I'm in Australia, it's presented a number of options around Australian websites where I can download it. So you download the one that's relevant to you. It doesn't matter really which one. So once you've selected one, it'll start to download and uh, it'll take a little bit of time and we'll check back once you have got that downloaded. Okay, so that CentOS ISO has now downloaded. And what we now want to do is we now want to connect into a VMware ESXi host or into a vCenter environment. Essentially, we now need to go and configure this new VM and get it running with CentOS. So I'm here on a Mac. You can do this connected via a Windows PC. Really, all I'm connected to is my ESXi host, one of my ESXi hosts. Uh, you, this is essentially the host that I'm selecting as the host that is going to install this CentOS VM. If you have vCenter, connect into vCenter. You're going to log in with your root credentials if you're connecting to a host. So I'm presented with a list here of all the VMs that are currently running within this ESXi host. Now I can go right here and create a basic shell of my CentOS box, but what I first need to do is I need to get that CentOS ISO that we downloaded to be recognized or to be part of the VMware storage first. So what I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna go and select storage. Within here, I've got some data stores. This is two data stores that I've got configured. You may have more, you may have less, really depends on your environment, but I've got one here for a test in my demo called Prod NAS. This is the data store that I need to use to upload that CentOS ISO that we just downloaded. Select Prod NAS right here, right click and say Browse. I'm now presented with a list of all of the contents that resides within this NAS, which includes VMs, as well as a folder that I've previously created called ISOs. If you don't have a folder called ISOs or software or data or something like that, uh, be a good idea to create one. It's good to have a folder that contains all of your ISOs so that you, you know, you've got them all readily available if you ever need to mount something to a VM. So I'm gonna go ahead and select ISOs right here, create one if you don't have one, and I'm now going to go and upload my CentOS OS. You'll see that I already have a CentOS ISO in here. That's because I've done this previously. But what you will need to do is you now need to select upload and navigate to the path where that ISO is located and upload it. So I'm here on a Mac. So obviously I'm connected here to my finder. If you're on Windows, you'll be presented with your Windows Explorer. You just go ahead and select the ISO, which is this one right here select open, and then that will start to upload it into your folder that you've selected. Now, depending on your network speed, this could take a little bit of time. The ISO is quite large, so just be patient. You'll get a navigation bar on the right here giving you a status of where it's at. Now we click on close and we go back to our virtual machines. From here, we now need to create our new VM. So select create, register VM. We're gonna be creating a new virtual machine, next. 
And now we give this VM a name. This is a name that's gonna be relevant. Give it a meaningful name. Because I'm doing this in a demo, I'm just gonna call it CentOS test. Okay, you can call it obviously something meaningful for you. Compatibility will be the version of ESXi that you are running. Now in my case, I've got 6.7. All of my hosts are 6.7. If you do have earlier ESXi hosts in your environment and you want to potentially move that VM between earlier versions of ESXi, select a compatibility that is earlier to, to the relevant version of ESXi that you've got. For me, I'm keeping it at 6.7. In here, I'm gonna select that the OS family is Linux and the OS version is going to be CentOS 8 64-bit. So that's going to essentially approximate uh, the defaults for your operating system. And now it's gonna ask me where I want to save that VM. I'm gonna select Prod NAS, that's my primary uh, data store. And you'll see that it's automatically predefined some things in here, including how much CPU, how much memory, and it's gonna create a 16 gig hard drive. For me, I'm gonna change that to 80 gig, but you can go and actually update these and increase them at a later stage if you so choose to. So I'm leaving all of that as the default. So we now want this VM to boot up and have that CentOS ISO mounted. So under CD DVD, we wanna select the drop down right here and select data store ISO file. It's gonna now ask me, where is this ISO located? So I'm gonna to navigate to that same path and select CentOS 8.1 and select. I'm gonna ensure that connect is ticked so that that ISO is mounted when that VM is powered on. I select next, gives you a bit of a summary, which includes where it's gonna be saving it and ensuring that that is the ISO that we are going to be mounting and we can now select finish. So that CentOS test VM is now created, or at least the shell is created. What we now need to do is we now need to power it on and we're gonna to connect to the console. So let's just select it, click on power on and open up the console window so that I can see what is going on. If you're not seeing this page, uh, it's possible that you've got, that something's gone wrong. So you're gonna to have to go back and troubleshoot, but we're assuming that everything is okay because you're now presented with this screen right here. For me, I know that my ISO is okay. So I'm gonna select install CentOS Linux 8. The pre-install steps will now begin and it's gonna ask me a few configuration options uh, for the next step. Now the great thing about this is that my keyboard and mouse works right within this console. So I can select my language, which will be English. If you can't tell from my dodgy accent, I'm from Australia, so I'm gonna select English Australia and select continue. Now I can go and configure some other things in here. I can change the time, my, you know, my time zone, I can do some other things. But down the bottom, you will see that it's saying to complete the items marked. So this is the installation destination. So I want to ensure that my hard drive, this is the 80 gig hard drive that uh, we want. All right, so making sure that that is selected, I can click on done, that is now gone. And now we click on begin installation. Now I can do a few other things before I do that, including setting my network IP address, or you can let it go and get an IP automatically if you do have DHCP running on your network. You'll see that right here, it's got an option under software selection that says server with GUI. So this installation will install not only the CLI, which is the command line interface, but it'll also install the graphical user interface, which comes with a taskbar and all of the icons and all of the fancy stuff to make it look like a real life operating system. So if I select this, I can actually decide to just build the server as is and not actually get a graphical user interface with it. So you can choose one or the other. Now the command line is gonna log in and you just present it with a black screen and it's command line and you need to know how to navigate through it. If you want, you can go and do it with a server with the GUI. So just for this demo, we're gonna do it with server with GUI, select one or the other. So obviously if you're gonna be building this with a GUI, you're gonna require to give it a bit more additional resources than if it's just command line. So let's select begin installation. Now it's gonna start doing its thing, all right? So it's gonna it's gonna start installing all of the stuff in the back end. but while it's doing that, I can go and configure the root password and assign some credentials right here. So let's go ahead and set the root password. Done, and then user creation. I'm gonna leave that as just my first name, username the same. Make this user an administrator. Oh yes I do, I would like that. And then the password for this user as well. So that is now done. So the root password is set, the user is set. Let this uh, run through, it may take a little bit of time. Installation should now be complete, so we can now say reboot. So now we're into the initial setup. So license information right here. 
I'm gonna give you some stuff. If you accept the license terms, you can do that. Say done, finish configuration. And here we are now presented with our login screen. So here's my username. I've put in the password that I allocated previously and sign in. Now, if you are installing just the CLI, you're not gonna be presented with the nice graphical user interface like this. You're gonna be presented just with a black screen asking you for your username and password, which you will then input next. So this is again, just more configuration stuff. You can leave most of this all as default. If you wanna have location services on, uh, I can skip all of that and we can start using CentOS. That is CentOS now installed. You can go and configure a whole bunch of stuff. You can go and customize it. Uh, you can use the CLI if you so choose to by going into the terminal window right here. And I've got my CLI, so I can actually go and see everything right here, which is really, really nice. You know, so a full directory structure, but uh, that is the steps. So very, very easy. I would recommend that you still do go and unmount that CentOS ISO from the uh, the VM. Okay, so what, what you could do is you could actually go and shut it down. All right, so shut down the whole VM altogether. It will do its thing. And then once that VM powers down right there, we can then right click on it, go into edit settings, navigate down to here. I like to just select host device again and then just untick connect. And then that way that uh, ISO is no longer mounted on that uh, VM. So that is it for now. I hope you found this helpful and hopefully you were able to install CentOS or maybe you're looking at doing it now, but definitely comment below. Let me know if you did find this helpful and if you're able to do this successfully, I'd really appreciate your comments and your feedback. As well as that, please subscribe to Digital Byte Computing and click on that notification bell for me to keep you up to date as I release new videos. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.